Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I'm just walking through my backyard and we're about to embark on part 15 of the great backyard cleanup. Now in part 14, I explained that my landlords are selling the property. I haven't heard any more. I will keep you updated. Um, so the real estate company hasn't been here to do photos or anything. So I'm just tinkering away in the backyard, just gradually sorting out a bit of stuff. I'm getting ready for another uh, load in the van to go to the scrapyard, which I'll probably do tomorrow. That will be a separate video and you may well see that one before you see this one. Uh, this episode of the Great Backyard Cleanup, um, not sure what I'm going to do today. It's an overcast day. It's quite nice weather. Uh, we are expecting a few showers. Coco's with me. We might sort out some of this timber and start cutting out a little bit. Um, I'll cut it up and stack it into milk crates and take it home for my shed fire at home. That will clean up a fair bit of this clutter. Uh, I did a big area over near the fence there that I think I showed you in the last episode, so that stayed fairly neat. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do a bit of um, Roundup spraying. I don't like using sprays as I mentioned often, but I need to keep it a little bit tidy and I don't want the weeds to just overgrow everything again. Uh, we've had a fairly wet late summer going into autumn and the, the growth on stuff at the moment is quite phenomenal. Uh, the backyard, if you have a look down here, the back lane I mean, uh, it looks a bit messy because I've all been organising scrap to take to Melbourne. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm going to take this time and what my plan is for gradually doing loads down there. I'm going to do them fairly regularly. So let's go and have a look at what I'm going to load up this time. And as I said, that will be a separate video. So these little buckets, I've got um, hats on them all because it rained last night and I don't want the buckets to fill up with water. I'm just filling up the buckets with heavy, heavy melt steel, they call it, in size, which is all smaller smaller heavier bits I'm getting about 25 kilos in each of these buckets you can see it's pretty chunky that's an old splitting wedge but it's a bit dangerous to resell pretty chunky heavy metal 25 kilos roughly per container and there's some larger ones here and I'm just going to stack all those in the van I'm aiming to get a ton of heavy melt steel in the van which is paying around about I think 46 or 48 cents a kilo at the moment um, and if I get a ton of that well there's going to be you know at least $400 and I'm unpacking these 44 gallon drums now this is a bit of double handling um, probably I didn't think it through properly when I was packing these drums each one of these drums weighs around about 350 kilos so there's about three drums to a ton and the idea was to get a crane in, lift them onto a truck and take them to Melbourne in one nice big paying load. And you can see they just continue right down along the fence here. I haven't sold any of this for, well, I've been here nearly 20 years. The drums are up on bricks, but some of them are starting to rust out at the bottom. So it would be a little bit dangerous to lift them with a crane. And my initial plan, well, my later plan was to put a little crane on my trailer and lift them up. And I've done that. And many of you would see the little crane on my trailer. However, it's not suitable to load onto my trailer. I could probably only get a ton and a half on the trailer anyway, but the crane, when it reaches out far enough to pick the drum up, I can't actually pick them up. It has to be close and then I don't really get, you know, it's just not quite suitable for things of this weight and this size. So I'm just going to unpack them all by hand. It doesn't take too long. This one's a bit messy. It's got a lot of little nuts and bolts in it, but most of them are just fairly large pieces of heavy steel. So it won't take long to unpack them and I'll just load up the van each trip I decide to do with the heavy melt steel around about a ton at a time and then I can top the van up with uh, other things to make the trip worthwhile I want to try and get a $2,000 trip each time I run down there especially with the price of fuel at the moment my last trip I got rid of all the cast aluminium and I do have a little bit more I'm just sorting out but I do have a lot of extruded I have a lot of domestic aluminium including pots and pans uh, how's this for a big lump? It's actually solid, solid lump of aluminium. So I've got quite a bit of that. I've also got electric motors. I've got a big pile of brass. I've got copper. Here's that other part of the yard I've cleaned up. So it's starting to look quite neat around here now. I'm not going to go out of my road, as I mentioned in the last episode, to make it look all spick and span and tidy because, quite frankly, I don't want the place to sell just yet. So I'm not going out of my road to... Uh, disillusion people but I'm just gonna I'm got to do what I've got to do and I can't spend weeks and weeks and weeks just sorting it all out so it looks nice and tidy I don't earn any money doing that 
So I'm just gradually organising sections. I do need to get into that shed. I'm not sure where this particular episode will finish up. Um, but today, while it's cool, I'm going to um, pack a little bit more scrap metal into the van, get it ready. I'll probably do a rundown tomorrow, sort out some of this other stuff. There is some things in this backyard that I need to sell. There's a nice motor under there. Uh, and there's part of an old hand fo uh, blacksmith's forge there. So I've got a lot of stuff here I can actually get into the shop, which I will do. Uh, just can't do everything at once. Okay, guys, an update. It's been a week since I've last added to this cleanup video. I have done another load of scrap to Melbourne, which you would have seen. And I've got all these buckets full for the next load, which I might try and do next week. So we're getting through these drums here. I've emptied about five or six. That one there is just full of rusty light bits and pieces, which... Uh, will go as either pressing steel or out to the transfer station. And thanks for everyone's feedback on my scrap run video about options and what I should tackle first. Uh, a lot of good input, thanks guys. <clears throat> uh, some did suggest getting rid of the pressing steel because it takes up a lot of space and it's looking messy. But I'm going to leave that. I'm going to just leave it all stacked along the edge as I process the yard because I can take it out to the transfer station here for free now a few of you thought it might have been a local yard but no it's just a transfer station where they will take any scrap metal just to dump off for free the other option as some suggested is i could get a local scrappy who might pick it up from here i doubt he'll pay anything for it even though pressing steel's gone up a little bit and it's paying quite well but i'm not going to take up my time just at the moment lugging loads of that down to melbourne Although someone also suggested hiring a truck, and that's not a bad idea. I've looked into some local hire charges, and that might be an option. But I'm going to save that to as a, as a plan if I have to actually empty this yard. And at this stage, I don't know. So I'm working through these drums. I'm getting a lot of very heavy stuff to take down in my next trip. Haven't I, Coco? Yep, she's been a great help. She's been sniffing around under the drums, looking for all sorts of creepy crawlies. Uh, so things are going pretty well there. Uh, what else has happened? Let's have a wander around the yard. I've been tackling little bits all over the place. Um, it's a matter of depending on the weather and today's overcast, which is quite nice out here, but some days the sun's quite hot and I find that I'll work, work down the back lane until the sun gets up and then I'll move to a shady area. I haven't got around to cutting any firewood. I might leave that for the moment. This whole cleanup job is going to be a matter of priorities and if it comes to the crunch and I have to clean up things quickly I could simply have a bonfire here and burn it all. It's um, mostly pellet timber and light timber. There are some nice heavy bits I'll take home for my shed fire but I could dispose of all that timber really quickly on a cool day with a bit of a bonfire going so I'm not going to spend time cutting it all up at the moment. I'm concentrating on getting some good value and doing these loads of scrap to Melbourne. Now, I've been working away in this little area because it's nice and shady under these trees. And in the heat of the afternoon, it's a great spot to work. I've got an outdoor little um, vice mounted there. And I'm going through piles of scrap and sorting. I've got another bucket of brass there. And I've been working through this big pile here. Now, this looks awfully messy. A lot of this has been dumped here with the view that there's good value in the scrap there i just need to strip it down so when we empty someone's shed as part of our job any bits of copper pipe and uh, stainless steel tanks and old basins and anything with some good brass or copper or value in it gets basically thrown in this pile it doesn't need to be undercover yeah sure it looks a bit messy but uh, the plan was to go through it when i get a moment now oh, this is good value for me to go through and uh, sorting out these piles will make the property look a little nicer a little more organized and it'll give me good value stuff to take down to the yard uh, for example here i've just been cutting lengths of copper in this little crate um, this will go as burnt copper or number two it's got a bit of paint it's got some solder but even that tub that's barely even covered the base of it is over eight kilos at it has to be at least ten dollars a kilo so 80 to 90 dollars worth just in that little tub there and I've got a lot more copper pipe lying around the yard, so I'll keep going on that. And that will provide some really good value stuff to throw in the van when I'm getting rid of loads of heavy melt steel. Uh, now, let's wander back up here. Now, I don't know if the camera's wobbling a little bit. 
I'm limping a bit today. I um, hurt myself playing table tennis last night. I uh, did a calf muscle, which happens as we get older and we still think we're a young teenager and you can't jump around like you used to. So I've got a bandage with a bit of ice on it at the moment. I'm supposed to be resting it, but you know, I've got a lot to do. Uh, I've been stripping a few motors here. I'm going to start packing these old motors in crates and I'll do a load of those at some stage. They're paying over a dollar a kilo. Uh, these are the ones that I brought back from the farm trip recently, you may remember, and I was considering doing a scrap out to salvage the copper wire, but now my priority has changed a little bit. They'll just all go down as electric motors. All those crates are also full of electric motors, so it'll be a good paying load there as well. And I come over here for a little bit. I'll just show you what I found in that pile I showed you before down near my shed. I was pulling bits of stuff out and I found a drum half full of, it's actually gun metal or known as red brass I think in the States. Uh, old water meters, very old plumbing fittings. Now it's basically brass with a higher percentage of copper and a bit of a grinder or fire will show that it looks like brass but it's sort of a pinker, almost a mushroom colour. Certainly not the yellow brass. Now I've got probably a hundred kilos of this now and this little lot I found at probably $150 worth. So nice little find, I'd totally forgotten I had it. And also, this is a large impeller off a pump, and it should also go as gunmetal or red brass. Uh, it's sort of almost like a bronze, and that one there weighs about eight kilos. So assuming we're going to get probably about $9 a kilo, we're looking at substantial money for one little piece so that's pretty cool uh it's nice to find all that stuff it'll stack up to make help make my trips to melbourne payable i scrapped out a heap of uh computer monitors that were oh, and tvs that i was saving up for a, a decker scrap video but i've just decided to process a lot of this and i can't film it all because it slows me up too much so i hope you don't mind if it turns out that I'm okay to stay here for a long term, we'll, we'll get back into the Decker Scrap series. I'll save up a few more things. If it turns out that I have to clean up and move, well, eventually I'll save up enough to, to continue that Decker Scrap series. Finding a few things in amongst the grass too that I can sell. A couple of nice old steel wheels here that would make good jockey wheels for a gate. So they'll just go straight into the shop. Uh, a galvanized iron square tub you know it's worth nothing for scrap but i should be able to get five to ten dollars for that and someone will probably grow plants in it so there we go that'll do for now um i'm not sure what i'll keep going at i think i'll just keep working on the scrap piles while the weather's nice and uh i i said i yeah i'll leave all the firewood for now and all the pressing steel i'll just pile up and we'll deal with that if and when we have to clean the yard up quickly and if there's no pressure then well i can do a load at any stage down the track when when i need to here's a nice copper hot water cylinder so i've got some good value stuff to take to melbourne uh, i've got to keep going through this pile but i like my little shady area in here it's a nice spot to work we might finish this video up here but uh just a, a bit of an update on the property um the real estate company sent a photographer in here yesterday to take some photos and he went into the house and the shop and photographed around there. He did a, 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 a layout or a plan of the, of the house or the building. Um, but it was quite amusing to have a chat to him. He's a nice bloke and he's just contracted to do a job. And I said, mate, you're going to have to work hard to make this place look nice. And he had a bit of a laugh and, and I showed him around the yard out here. And, and he was thinking, well, we're going to get some drone footage. And he said to me, this might be one of these places that less is more. As in, if you can't show lots of good photos of nice aspects, you just show what you can and you kind of don't worry too much about the others. And he also said for the drone footage, he said, oh, we may have to we ha may have to blur a bit of it out. So, But from the air, I think most of you'd see a lot of tree canopies, so you probably wouldn't see a lot of my scrap. Anyway, we'll leave this video here. Uh, this is part 15. Um, I'm just going to basically work away uh, organising my scrap. I'll do another scrap run soon. Uh, probably next week if my legs okay and we'll keep going on sorting out the piles of scrap over near the shed i'll get into my workshop at some stage i can't even get in the door at the moment so we'll try and get into there and we might feature that in part 16 coming up very soon thanks for watching guys we'll catch you next time bye for now